Hey guys, so I just came back from meeting with the folks over at Brusso Hardware and they're sending us home with a knife hinge and the templates to use to install it. So let's go back to the shop, check it out, and see how it works. Hey folks, Rusty Myers from Rusty Myers Woodworking here. Welcome to the shop. In this series of videos that we're going to produce in partnership with Brusso Hardware, we're going to go over how to install and uh, incorporate their hardware into some of your projects. Brusso is a, a precision hardware company that makes knobs, hinges, pulls, and latches. So for more on what they uh, have to provide, go check out their website at www.brusso.com. So today we're going to talk about the L37 hinge and the TJL37 template that goes with that hinge. And the template will be the focus of the video. But let's talk real quick about the L37 knife hinge. It's what we would call an offset pivot or an offset knife hinge. Now, those two terms are interchangeable, and in this video we'll use both of them, but knife hinge, pivot hinge, same exact thing. And the way that it works is the offset end of it, the pivot end of it, sticks proud, sticks on top of the box, and that's the only way that it'll work. And that's what the template allows you to do, is it allows you to mortise out the pocket for that so the offset end of it sticks proud of the box. And um, these are used for small uh, craft boxes, cigar boxes, things like that. But also if you took the box and you stood the box up on, on end, it can be used for a medicine chest or for uh, some other kind of cabinet that, that hangs. You can see just by looking at it, completely different than a normal butt hinge. A normal butt hinge sits on the back member of a box and is attached to the bottom of the back member of the overlay lid. Whereas on a knife hinge, the knife hinge is actually mortised into the side of the box and into the side of the lid. It allows you to do a few different things. It allows you to carry a heavier lid, but um, I mean the biggest difference is it allows you to have an inset or a recessed lid. So the lid doesn't sit on top of the box. The lid actually sits inside the box. So this thing here is really neat. This is the TJL37 template, which goes with the L37 and L39 knife hinges. Now, very important, this template only works with those two hinges. It will not work with any other manufacturer's hinges. And uh, because it's designed specifically for these hinges, you have a really, really, really precise fit when you mortise out the pockets for these hinges. And uh, just taking a look at it, you can see it allows you to mortise both sides of the box and both sides of the lid. So everything you need to be able to do to install these hinges, you can do with this template. Now, these types of templates are worth their weight in gold because every time you use it, you get the same exact result. You get a consistent result. And whether you're somebody who's a beginning woodworker, or you're somebody who's a fine woodworker who's been doing this for years, um, you'll be really happy with it because it allows you to get consistent results professional results. Um, the results are very, very precise, and it's really just easy to do. So the main tool that you're going to need for today is going to be your router, and uh, you're going to need a 3 8 inch router collar for that, as well as a quarter inch bit that goes inside the router. And um, you can use any kind of router you want to use. I'm going to use my fixed space router just because I found my plunge router is just a little bigger and a little too... Um, just a little too heavy, especially when you put down pressure on it on the template. So the fixed base router is small, easy, and works just as well. And uh, to set the depth for your bit, you're just going to go take your combination square, put it next to the template and the hinge, and just set the correct depth, take that, and transfer that to your router. So two things before we get started about how to use the template. Uh, the first is make sure that you take the template and try it out on a piece of uh, junk stock just to make sure you get a good feel for it. And that's a good rule of thumb anytime you do anything with a new technique or a new uh, piece of equipment or anything like that. Always test it out before just to make sure you, you have a, a good understanding of how it works. Uh, also make sure that you do not assemble your box before you do this project because it will be impossible for you to get a router in once you have the sides assembled. So take your sides, cut them all out, mortise out the pockets, and then you can go back and build everything. So let's take the side member, we'll put the side member on the table, we'll take the back member, put it right up against that, make a scribe mark from where it's going to sit, then we'll take the TJL37 template and line the foot up with the scribe mark that we just made. Take a sharp pencil, run it around the inside of the template, so we're going to know where the, uh, where the hinge is ultimately going to end up sitting on the side, and um, you're also going to need that line later on for when you go back and clean it up with a chisel. 
So next we'll take the piece in the template and we'll take it and we will clamp it together. And then what I found has worked out fine for me. I take it and I put it in my, my vise over here and that's how I do the cuts. The process here is pretty darn simple. Just take your router and like I said, I'm using my fixed base router. Pop the bit down in the hole, which is on the other side, and then turn it on. And just run it through. When you run your router through the template, make sure you pay very close attention to toolpath. Run your router in the right direction, go nice and slow, and don't round your corners. This will make you avoid tear out, and in the end it will give you a cleaner installation for the hinges. And this here is what you come up with. You come up with, once we unclamp it here, you can see what you come up with, and it looks pretty sharp, and I mean that couldn't be easier. So you just repeat this for the other side, then when you're done, take a very sharp chisel and just clean out the corners, make it straight. Take your hinge and pop your hinge in there, making sure that you have the holes in the correct alignment so you have the countersinks facing in. And uh, what I've noticed with this is it's a really snug fit. So just take a spare piece of wood, just clonk it a couple times, and there you go. So when you're all done, just run your finger over the top of it, and you'll see that Right here you see that it is not sitting proud of the top of the piece of wood. It's sitting exactly flush with the piece of wood, which is the way that this knife hinge is designed to work. It's the only way that it'll work since the lid is right on top of that. And when you're all done with all that, when you've done it this uh, exact same mortising to the other piece of wood, the other side member, go back and hit it with your, um, with your drill bit and pre-drill the holes for the brass screws that are included with the knife hinge set. Okay, so before I went to sleep last night, I went and I glued everything up. And as you can see with the box, I have these rabbited joints that I've done along the, uh, the corners. And uh, everything sat with glue on the overnight. I made sure I put in the hinges on the back of the walls of the box before I went to sleep. And um, so that basically does it for the hardware for the box itself. The only hardware that I have left to install is the hardware that's going to go on the back of the lid. And for that, you would use the same TJL37 template. And you'd put that along the back. Um, they give you this little shim, and the little shim you put along the back of it and just press it forward, and what that does is that gives you the right offset for when you mortise the hinge so it sits just at the back of that, that lid. Um, one note about the shim is you have to place the shim flat along the back as opposed to in the corner here or in the corner here, because if you do, it won't, uh, won't offset correctly, and then your hinge won't work. Uh, the technique for this is no different. Take it, clamp it up. Remember to take the shim off and then uh, run your router through it, pre-drill the holes, and install the hinge. So when you end up putting the lid on the box, just one thing to, to sit there and think about is uh, you have to be able to slide in the one end first, like that, and then put the hinge in, in here, and then attach the hinge to the, uh, the box once it's in, because you really don't have any wiggle room once you're all done with that. So here's the end result of what we've been working at today, and I can't say enough about how happy I am with how it turned out. The hinges were very, very easy to install, and that's a direct result of this TJL37 template. It made putting them in a breeze. Now, um, you can see just by looking at it how the pivot hinge works. The pivot hinge sticks proud of the box. Now, just a few things about the box itself. Um, your lid needs to be fit precise. You cannot have any sort of gap around the edges or anything like that, or else the Brusso hinges will, will um, shift back and forth. They're not designed to do that. They're designed to have the lid fit really, really tight in there. And because of that, when you go to close your lid, um, you're going to notice the lid might fit too tight. So you're going to need to do some fine tuning with your lid, but also do some edge relief on the bottom of the uh, leading edge of the the um, door here. Just So just take a little bit of the product off on the bottom of that. So you could do that with your block plane, or I took my bench sander and I just ran uh, the 
not just the leading edge, all four edges of it, I ran it through my bench sander at a 3% bevel. And that just took enough off just so uh, it, fits, it fits tight. Now, I know it fits tight because when I put my hand on the back of it and I close it, I feel air being shot out the back of it. So I know that that is a very, very, very tight fit. Uh, one last thing that Brousseau recommends is periodically give it some lubrication. Give it some nice, high-quality oil, and that will extend the life of the hinges. Don't use graphite, just nice, uh, high-quality oil, and that'll make these hinges last for a long, long, long time. So thanks again for coming in with me today and checking this out. Uh, I originally was going to use this as a, a craft box, but the more that I look at it, you know, I came up with this pole in my box of poles back there, and um, I feel like I want to take this and install this on the wall. But you can go ahead and you can do all kinds of neat stuff with this. Go to bruso.com, check out these products and the rest of the products that they have, and, um, and have at it. So again, thanks for stopping by the shop. I'm Rusty Myers. Happy woodworking.